Hi, this is Mark Ganser, Technical Account Manager at EAC Product Development Solutions with this week's Tip of the Week. Today we're going to talk about family tables and some alternatives to family tables, depending on what you want to do. Now here are the things we're going to look at today. Really, they all involve some sort of a variable configuration or, or variable view. Now if you're looking at family tables, you should really have every member of that table be some unique orderable item something that has a part number, is used somewhere else, or maybe a customer can order from you. Now, simplified representation is all about displaying a single orderable item, a single assembly in different ways, or maybe for large assembly management. Now, with mechanisms, we're talking about alternate positioning. Maybe it's one single orderable item, but can have different positions, open or closed, up, down, that sort of thing. Now, family tables we'll start out with first. Again, different numbered items. You want something that's a real live part that somebody can order or use. So they're each unique. The nice thing about family tables versus some of the other ways I've seen people try to make versions of something is they're traceable in PLM. Now, geometric similarity is also a real important thing or assembly similarity. Don't try and really stretch the use case to jam more things in the family table. Don't add more and more columns till you get really something out of hand. I saw a family table once a customer had set up where they had so many columns and such, they used one family tables for bolts, nuts, washers. They were all built in there. They had stretched the use case so far. Also, with family tables, try and pick a case where you have a finite foreseeable number of things in it. You don't want to have this family table take on a life of its own go on forever constantly adding more and more columns or uh, more and more rows to try and bring in more and more things. You're looking for uh, minor, logical, predictable variation. Some family table tips. Don't use the generic instance as, as one of these deliverable items. The generic instance should be used to spawn unique numbered use cases. It should not be one in itself. So you'll have your generic bolt here with some sort of generic name. The instances will be the real things that you'll actually pop in and use in sub-assemblies. Also, give the dimensions you're going to use in a family table names. It's a lot easier to edit the table when you see diameter and length showing up instead of D6 and D5. Especially if you have more and more columns, you're going to start scratching your head going, okay, what was that dimension again? A tip we had a few weeks ago was use relations to limit columns. Rather than in the previous sheet where we talked about diameter and length for a, a bolt, maybe you choose in the family table a column that has size. And you'd have relations that said, well, okay, if the size is quarter, it means the major diameter is this, the minor diameter is that, the bolt head is this size. Cleans up the family table quite a bit. One of the big benefits, of course, is any family tables is swappability. So a family table, great clue to provide you down a path of, say, we want to go family tables, is if you have different parts of sub-assemblies that swap out quite frequently. That'll help you out quite a bit there because it'll do it automatically for you. Another way of doing alternate uh, geometry based on one single set, one parent, is an inheritance model. can be used to an alternative to a family table. Basically, you use one existing model as a starting point for a new one. So if I take that generic bolt and dump it in as an inheritance feature as you see here, I can turn any of those features on and off or change the dimensions of them without having that instance of all those uh, instances in a family table where I have to verify all of them. Now this is part of the advanced assembly package, so be forewarned uh, that's required to do this. Now mechanisms. When should I maybe consider a mechanism instead of a family table? Well, a dead giveaway is if you've got instances in a family table where they're called open, closed, up, down, or something, that's a clue that you've got uh, motion in this assembly, and you should look at a mechanism instead. Now to create, to assemble something with joints instead of constraints, and to position these different things, MDO is not required. Part of the base package, you can do this, make mechanisms and position them. Great thing about these specific positions is you can save these positions as name snapshots. 
you can also make those snapshots available for use in drawings. So it's a way to show some sort of a, of a subassembly in different positions on the same drawing without creating new models, without creating uh, new instances. It just shows up. Now last, simp reps. Simplified reps are really about taking that one deliverable item and showing it in different ways. So for example, I've got a, a box here without the cover shown. Now nobody's, unless you have somebody uh, ordering this, may you say you manufacture this, somebody ordering this from you either with or without the cover, you don't want to go with family tables. If you're just showing it without the cover for clarity in a drawing and nobody's going to say, hey, I want to order that box without the cover, simplified representations because you don't want in your PLM solution a numbered item that really doesn't exist. That's not something somebody can use or buy. Now let's look at some of these things live. First of all, let's look at this bolt. Show you a couple of the tips. This is a kind of the classic use case for family tables. What we can do here is I'm going to take the diameter and length of this and name those, show you how that works out. Let's go to the properties for that dimension. Here's where you do that. See it's got D5 as a name now and let's call that length. And I'll check my spelling because I'm an engineer and I can't spell. There we go. And let's grab this diameter dimension, go to its properties. We'll call it diameter. And true to form, I misspelled it. There we go. Now when I want to do a family table of this, we'll go to the tools. There it lives right there. And I say I want to add some columns, things I want to change. I'm going to grab dimension. Notice it knows about the length. Grab that as well. Now when I'm editing this, I can see right at a glance, oh, I know what I'm changing right here. This works real well for me. Now another thing we talked about is inheritance models. Let's show you how those work. Create a new part. And we'll say OK to that. I'm going to just use my English template. Now what I want to do is I want to say get data. And there's merge and inheritance right there. I want to open an existing model. And let's go in session because that will give us a little less stuff to deal with. Now it's going to want to know how to assemble it. And you can always go with default because, hey, it really doesn't matter. One thing we want to do as well is on the top, we want to make sure we want to make it an inheritance, not a merge. Merge gives you a big old dumb solid you can't do anything with. So let's change inheritance and say OK. Notice we have that bolt as a starting point from the other model, but now I could go into any of these things and edit those dimensions. Maybe I want this version of it to be 3 quarters of an inch instead. Now that just happens to this instance, by the way. So all of these things I do don't affect the parent. So if I go back to find that parent bolt, he's not changed. So it's a one-way street. Now let's look at the mechanisms a little bit. Now this is a case where I've got a little toggle clamp. And I want to show this in different positions on a drawing. I'm not going to, uh, it's not, it doesn't become a different part. It's just showing it in different ways. So I assembled this with joints. I can drag components. And when I go to drag components, I get this little snapshot deal here. So I can create a snapshot. I'm going to call that uh, closed. Now I can grab this piece and move it a little bit. Let's say that right about there is open. Take another snapshot. We'll call that open. Now I can, you notice there's no, no icon in front of these positions right now, but if I go to this little camera shot right here, I get a little drawing icon in front of those that says, oh, hey, you can use those on your drawing now. So if I would create a new drawing for this toggle clamp, 
and we'll take the easy way out today. We'll have it empty and not worry about formats and proper drafting practices. Now when I want to place a view on here, if I go to the view states, where am I here? Let me find this. Ah, the exploded view. Lo and behold, there's closed and open. So let's go with closed and apply that. That worked pretty nice. Now let's we want to show that open as well. So let's put another general view right here. And we want to explode. Nothing will change here because the model wasn't open when we last used it. There, we've showed that mechanism in two different positions on the same drawing, and I didn't have to mess with any family tables. I just moved it like it would normally move as a real thing. Last case is simplified representations. Now, simplified representation is really about showing things in different ways. It's still the same thing. It's still the same part number. And maybe in this case, hey, I want to show this thing without the cover to show some of the internal detail. So I can go to my view manager. And I'm in the simp wrap. I'm going to create a new one. And real imaginatively, I'll call it no cover. When I create that, let's pop this thing open. Let's change the default rule to master rep. And there's the cover there. Let's say that, turn that thing off. And maybe we want to get rid of that floating bolt too. So let's get rid of that as well. So now it's still the same thing. It's still the enclosure box. We're just removing some detail, and usually that's for working on it or maybe a drawing view. So heck, let's. how would that help us in a drawing view? Do the same thing again. Let's make a quick drawing. And there's our enclosure box. We'll have an empty B size again. Now when I take any sort of a view and place it somewhere, one of the options I have is simplified representation. In any view I can say, well, let's use that and make that the no cover version. Now if you have any questions on this tip or any of the other tips, feel free to contact at us at EAC or, even better, leave a comment under the video you're watching now and we'll get back to you. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.